Hello and welcome. Uh, we are going to look at uh, the uh, authentication in this tutorial. Uh, just for a, a review of what we have done so far, we have been able to uh, customize the home page, the about page, the blog page, and the contact page. In our recent video, we worked on the contact form and we were able to import the third party library for Django Bootstrap, uh, Django Crispy Form, sorry. And uh, we were able to incorporate it into our website uh, application. So in this tutorial, we are going to look at how we can uh, probably come up with these uh, login and the sign up. And we are going to use uh, another third party library that is called Django All Auth. And the Django All Auth uh, kind of uh, builds on top of the default Django authentication. Uh, the default Django authentication focuses on uh, the uh, authentic auth authenticating a user using the username, uh, the password, and then the email. And then we have some additional details which include the first name and the last name. Uh, the, the, the the API uh, gives the provides the details. Uh, and you remember we had uh, worked on the uh, the user model for Django, and the other thing that the Django auth has an advantage over the default, uh, the Django auth, all auth has over the Django authentication is the fact that uh, it can manage the email addresses. So when you're signing up, for example, in your website, you can sign up and then you'll get probably an email uh, in your personal email that uh, sends you a link to verify. Uh, and then you can also authenticate using the email as opposed to just the username. And then you can be able to, let's say if you're forgotten, there's a workflow for forgotten password. So if you've forgotten your password, you can be able to recover it. And then the most important one so far that I have I've come across is the authenticating using the social, uh, social accounts like Facebook, uh, Twitter, and the like. So uh, I'll just go to the slightly to the this documentation for Django All Auth, and you'll see it supports so many providers uh, that include uh, GitHub, uh, Facebook, Google, and uh, many others. So the first step that we are going to do in this tutorial, we are going to install this Django All Auth package, and uh, we will install it. Uh, just like we did in the previous in the other in the Django Crispy form, and uh, first of all, we are going to check that our containers are indeed running, as and as you can see, they are running. So uh, let me clear the screen. So I'll use the Docker compose command, and then I run the inside the web uh, container, and it will be uh, ppen uh install django all auth and uh, maybe i can refer point it to this uh, latest django all auth that i'm fetching from this piper here the uh, cheese shop yeah so i'm installing the django all auth uh, version 0 0.5 1.0 inside the container so it has installed successfully as I can see in the message. And now the next step will be to uh, stop the containers and then uh, rebuild them, yeah? So I can just do a Docker Compose down, which will stop all the containers. And then uh, we'll uh, run Docker Compose uh, up in a detached mode, and then I'll rebuild the containers. Yes, so it, uh, we've been able to rebuild uh, the container. So let's see if our website is still running. Yeah, it's up and running. Uh, the next step will be to edit the settings.py file. And uh, these steps, I'm referring them to the, uh, the Django Wall of documentation. So we've already installed it inside our Docker container. We've uh, rebuilt so that we can be able to synchronize our pip, pip file dot lock, and then uh, it states that we need to have this context processor 
for a template uh, in order to, in order for you to work with the all auth. So in particular, we have this Django template content processors dot request. So let's look at our code uh, in settings.py inside the templates. And uh, indeed, we still have this. So the all auth requires us to have this. Then the next step will be to uh, to edit the to add and the authentication backend that is supported by the Django all auth. And uh, the authentication backend as uh, this is uh, the first one is uh, we have this model model backend which Django uses, uh, which Django uses uh, by default, and it is needed to log in by username. Uh, all auth supports authentication method using the email and also social other social providers, as we have seen. So we need to. I'll just copy this from the documentation, as I don't think I have it here. Yeah, so I'll just probably paste it somewhere here, and I'll remove these comments because I don't need them. So under the uh, under Django uh, uses the first. Uh, this authentication for model backend by default, uh, but we need this to allow the all auth authentication. And uh, the other step that we'll navigate back to our installed apps, and we need to add uh, the all auth and the all auth account. Uh, for the social account, we won't add it right now because we it's not within the scope of this tutorial. So I'll just add the all auth. And the all auth account, and then finally we we need to have because we will be testing our email, our sign up using the email. Maybe not, maybe later, uh, later, uh, later after this tutorial, we'll be able to check on the email backend which is already there, and then we will add some parameters here. Uh, one of them will be login, redirect which directs us to the, to the URL. And in this case, I'll just put it to home. And then uh, I'll add another one, which is account logout uh, redirect, uh, which will also uh, point to the to home. And then another parameter that I will add is a site ID. It's also a requirement. And uh, in this case, we'll have site ID is equals to one. Uh, it is actually somewhere here in the documentation. And then if you we had added social, uh, which we have not, you can state which social authentication that you are using. We have, there's an example here that shows the Google uh, authentication. And then finally, we will uh, edit our urls.py for the project and we'll add this path the URL configuration for the project, so which is in this my website and not the app URL. So it said the URLs, I'll add it here. Before the other one. Yeah, so after we have done that, then we are going to run the Python, uh, Python manage py migrate. And remember we are running this inside the container. So we'll start with docker compose exec. Uh, web container name uh, Python manage PY migrate. Okay, so it seems like we, I had already added this earlier, so there's no migration migrations to apply. Uh, nevertheless, that's what we have, and. Uh, now the next step will be adding the te the template. Uh, maybe we can add the, our templates here for the so that you can test the login and the the and the likes. So inside our templates directory, uh, we need to create a new uh, directory that is called account. And inside this account directory, we are going to create three templates. 
Uh, we have done template creation before. So I'm just going to move brush through it. And we will have the login.html as our first template. And our second template will be uh, sign up. Uh, .html. And I'll also add an additional one, which will be uh, logout dot html so these are the three templates that we are going to be using uh, inside here so we will start with the in this case i will start with the login dot html and i will uh, just copy the we add these extends base dot html and uh, since we'll be using the Actually, I'm working on the logout, so let me go to the login. And I will add the crispy forms, so load crispy form tags. And then I will add the title. Uh, this one, I think I can copy it from another template. I uh, don't know where I've taken the other. Oh, they are down here. So let me copy that and paste it here. This is the title. So I'll call it login. And then I will add the block content. And uh, I've entered the block. Then inside these, we will uh, probably add a header, a, a heading. And so I can call it login. And then I will add a form. And then inside the form, we'll have the method as usual. And then inside the form, we will add. Uh, cross-site forgery uh, protection request so that we, uh, we do not have somebody accessing the, the form details CSRF token or accessing the token because uh, uh, they can use it in a malicious form. So a large form and then a large the crispy uh, tag and then uh, the login form should have a button which will be, um, you can just call it, I'll use a bootstrap, uh, maybe success, BTN, BTN success, which will be blue in color. And then we have the type, uh, which will be submit. And inside it, you can add login. Okay, and then, so this is our form element and uh, let's see let's test it uh, using the browser so our lad account account login uh, so it's I see not right. accounts login yeah, so you see, you already have the form. Uh, it uh, looks so wide, so I can probably wrap this in a container. Uh, I keep on forgetting that clear uh, container. So I'll, I've wrapped everything inside the div. better let's see how the page looks like yeah so this is our login uh, form that we have created and uh, the next one will be let me work on the sign up and then I'll work on the logout so we have the sign up I can as well just copy these and paste the code here 
and then I will call this sign up. And then I'll change a few items here. So for this one, we'll have sign up. And then the method will be post CSRF. And this button needs to be success. Let me correct that. There's a typo error there. Yeah, and then we will call this sign up. So I think that's just some of the maybe some of the few things that we have changed. And I think we can leave it as it is. Let's let's see whether we have this sign up. Yeah, so here we have the sign up form. So you can sign up uh, using the you you can create uh, input your username. An email which is optional, but we can use Django Alloth to enforce uh, an email. And then we have password and the password repetition. Another thing that you can also do with the Django Alloth, we can be able to disable these repetitive repetition of passwords using the configuration uh, for the Alloth. Uh, but we're going to see uh, about that. Let's work on the logout. So let's work on the logout and then we can see how we can test the working of the pages yeah so i'll copy the contents of the login and then i'll also paste them here and then i'll call this i can call it logout and then i can also call this log out log out and then I'll also change this to logout. And then for this theme, I'm going to add danger. So it will be like a red kind of a button. And uh, under this heading, I can maybe add some paragraph there. Uh, I can also add some content in other, even the login and the sign up. So I can call it, I can say, is confirm that is confirm that you want to log out or you can even put a question there do you really want to log out okay so yeah so uh, this uh, we've been able to create the login the sign up and the logout and uh, let's see if those pages work. So let's uh, first of all sign up. So I'll just use a fictitious name so I can call it Joseph Karyuki. And for the email, I can just use this. And for the password, I'll just input some fictitious or uh, some, uh, some password that I'm going to test and then I'll do the sign up. Now there's one problem. When I sign up, you'll notice that we have this uh, localhost account profile not found, yeah? So when we we do the sign up, you'll notice that we there's an error that we are getting. It's, it's actually trying to access some profile and uh, it's ending up into an error because it does not uh, that uh, URL does not exist or the route does not the route to this does not exist so what we are going to, uh, to do we are going to see how we can correct that so in order to fix this uh, error that we are getting we will see what we can how we can uh, sort out this uh, let me see if we can be able to access the logout. Yeah, so whenever you try to log out, so when I've uh, signed up, it has automatically logged me in. And now I want to log out. And you see the button, you can see the button is uh, red. Uh, this is due to the uh, this item that we have added here, the button class for, from Bootstrap. So whenever I click log out, it goes back to there. Home page because of the logout uh, logout reader uh, account logout redirect. Okay. 
So I'm not sure. Let me see if we have account login redirect in the configuration. Uh, we are going to look into that. Uh, so let's let's update the URLs all over our website. And then like this in the home page, we have this sign up which is not assigned to any URL. And uh, we'll just open it up, uh, which is in uh, home.html. Then we will look for that button that we created. Here it is. Uh, so I'm going to uh, to use an anchor. And then I'm going to add the link. I'm going to add our URL. Which is uh, in this case it will be account uh, sign up and uh, let's make sure that we have added it correctly. So as you can you see if you see we have the you can open the link in a new tab, it's going to take us to the sign up. So we have added it in those few words or those few lines. The other item we're going to do, we are going to customize the login and the sign up on the navigation bar. And this one, I can get it from the base.html. The navigation bar, we have the login and uh, the sign up. So it will be URL and it will be account underscore. Uh, login and I'll just copy this and paste it here. And then replace this with sign up. And then when I refresh my page and then I click on login, this is where it takes me. Uh, whenever I click on sign up, this is where it takes me. And uh, let's see the about. So we can also customize it inside the about, the sign up, the sign in and the sign up buttons. And uh, I will access it through the about.html. And uh, we have these buttons here. So I'll just, for ease of access, I'll just change this into an anchor. And then I will add. A reference href. Then I'll add the URL, which will be account uh, login. Let's call it login. And then I'll just copy this. Add it here. And then I'll call it the sign up. Okay, and then I can refresh and see that it's navigating to the sign up and the uh, login pages. Okay. So now uh, we have been able to add the sign up, the logging, and the logout pages. And uh, in the next tutorial, which may be short, we are going to see how can you tell that a user has logged in from these uh, HTML or from the front end. We are going to see uh, how we are going to do to go about that. And uh, this marks uh, the end of this tutorial, uh, where we have been able to look at the some functionality of the Django all auth and it is uh, well it has so many configurations some of them we may even look at them but nevertheless we have been able to check the functionalities and we've been able to create our sign up our login pages and uh, if you like this video uh, don't forget to like uh, add, add some thumbs up uh, as it helps uh, even in the YouTube algorithm and, and uh, 
feel free to subscribe to my channel for more content and uh, don't forget to click on the bell icon for for notifications whenever i upload some new content uh, thank you for watching